Hey, what's happening? It's KMac and Away. Uh, today, we're going to talk to you about Env0 complex workflows. And the reason we built this is because a production apps infrastructure often consists of many different resources. Now, in theory, these resources are loosely coupled, and we have a microservice architecture that doesn't depend on each other. But in the real world, in production, we oftentimes have dependencies. And that's really the key idea here. Anyway, will you tell us a little bit about remote state and uh, different frameworks as it relates to complex workflows? Yeah, I think that's one of the key advantages in M0's workflows. The ability to separate out your state. Sure, in Terraform, you can define your dependencies and have it orchestrate, or in Terraform, define those dependencies. But oftentimes, you want to separate out that one huge deployment into separate smaller deployments. Similar idea from your monolithic to microservices architecture. We want to do the same thing for our infrastructure. But at the same time, when you how do you orchest then orchestrate all of these smaller resources? That's why M0 workflows exists. Another side benefit is M0, because of our support of multiple types of infrastructure code platforms like Pulumi or Terragrunt and Kubernetes, you can then use those different types of templates, different types of infrastructure frameworks in your complex workflow. Anyway, in practice, tell me, what does that actually look like? So let me share my screen. Here we have a resource, M0 environment that was deployed. We call it the full stack EKS and DB. And what it is built off of is this template. In this template, we're deploying a VPC, EKS, a DB, um, and some services after those resources. What it looks like in M0, then when you've deployed it, is this graph. This graph will show you the deployment process and the dependencies. Here, my configuration service, my monitoring service. My configuration service is dependent on both EKS and my DB, whereas my service mesh is going to be deployed after my EKS and my DB monitoring service is going to be deployed after my DB. So let me kick off a, a new run just to show you what it looks like. Here, I click on create new environment, choose from a template, and we'll search for our VPC, EKS, and DB full stack, and click run now. And I'll just hit run. And you'll see the entire stack getting deployed, starting from the VPC. Here, we can see the VPC is running, and the DB and EKS is waiting for the VPC to be completed before it finishes, before it starts deploying. And at any moment, we can dig into the VPC and find out exactly what's going on. So here, the VPC is in progress, and it's almost complete. We can go back. Um, soon, we'll see a check mark here. In code, this is how we define a complex workflow. It's a simple YAML file that defines the resource that we're going to deploy based off of what template, and then We'll have, similar to GitHub Actions, define the dependencies. Here, when we deploy DP, a database, we'll need the VPC. The EKS, we'll also need the VPC. And here for this service configuration service, they're de de dependent on both the DB and the EKS, EKS cluster. Thanks, Aiway. And that's N0 Complex Workflows, showing you how to orchestrate your resources, many different resources across your production app infrastructure. Um, this is, again, perfect for dependencies when you have state files that you're trying to manage and if you're using multiple frameworks. Mm -hmm.